This garden needs some irrigation. Okay, to start the irrigation system, we start with a one inch manifold. I've chosen four outputs. You choose how many you want, how many zones you want to control. At the end here, I'm not going on to anything else. So I'm going to use a one inch film Mac cap. The description will be in below of all these parts. So I've already taped the end here with uh, Teflon tape and so these things just need to be hand tight. The next component I have is a diaphragm uh, one inch so I'll need a one inch nipple. First I'm going to put it into the diaphragm on the inlet side then uh, on the exit of this I, I've got 19 mil hose or a sprinkling low density pipe and then on the other side I've got the one inch BSP for this particular diaphragm so I'm just going to screw that in there so with that there's an o-ring here so there's no need to tape this uh, solenoid and it just goes into the diaphragm in this little hole this is a 24 volt one traditionally they come with 24, 27 volt, 24 volt AC. But because I've got a DC power source in my shed, I bought this. Again, the description will be below. So you just push it in a little bit and righty tighty. So that's in. All right. So now we can go into the manifold. Uh, these are called break points, so that will allow you to change it out without turning the whole manifold in the ground. In there, and there we have our first setup. So I'm just going to continue that. Coming off the one inch manifold, capped off at the end, so the water is going to come in, and then you decide. Where, which zone it will go to. To make the system more reliable I've terminated all the ends of these cables and fit them into this component which is just a house cable connector. Um, so these are all just the red terminal on the 12 volt battery system. The function is to allow the power of the 12 volts to control the solenoids without, with, whilst protecting the Arduino which is on this side. So the Arduino will control this side which will make each switch come on which will control each solenoid. I bought this from Core Electronics. This is the Arduino based microcontroller. I say it's Arduino based because it's based on the open source architecture of the Arduino. However this is just Core Elect Electronics knockoff, which is $16.95. So this is where you're going to save your money. For reliability, I, I bought this uh, shield, which has screw-in terminals. Instead of just plonking your cables in, you're actually tightening them down with a screw. So this just goes into these pins. The way I tell that it uh, these nine pins here go into these nine and then everything else should just line up and you just push it in until it is all the way home. So I'm just using pins 0, 1, 2 and 3 in order to control relays 1, 2, 3, 4. So now I'm going to just connect 0 to 0 one to two two to three three to four now you also need to connect um, the five volt power from the Arduino into the VCC terminal of the relay and the ground to the ground. So 
so that's how they go. Yeah, we just got the 9 volt battery, which will be the power source for the Arduino. We've got all the solenoids red cables coming into one connector. This is to make it easy to then get some distance to get into the safe spot, into the, um, the black side of the power source. After that, each black side of each solenoid, so I'm going to call this solenoid 1, 2, 3 and 4. So that in my control system I know which one I'm talking about. So 1 will go into the, the end here, which is the normally closed side of this relay. So you put it in and you get a tiny screwdriver and you just make sure that that's in firm. Connection here and then on relay 2 I'm going into the normally closed third terminal. Put the cable in and tighten. On the relay, the black side of the four solenoids have come into relay 1, 2 and 3 and 4. Solenoid 1, 2, 3 and 4. This gives you control of each zone. This has been put into the normally closed side. As you can see on this symbol here, this one is not connected, meaning it's normally closed. The other side is normally open, but we're just using the normally closed side. And now we're going to connect the red from the battery into each common, which is the middle terminal of each of these relays. So it doesn't actually matter which of these you connect because it's all common. Uh, so we'll just start with one in there, tighten it up. On the first three I've connected the common terminal. I haven't connected the fourth because I don't have it right now. This is connected to the red source of the, the battery. There's a little hole here. Um, which just allow me to put this here or just screw that in so that's nice and firm. So we have a good power connection. <clears throat> All right, this is the brain of the system. This is the open source hardware. It's based on the Arduino architecture. It's got this terminal shield in here to allow for a bit more reliability for the system and it talks to the it, the relays and controls each one. This is the USB-A plug-in. This particular Arduino came with a cable but just check uh, to see if yours does. If not you need a USB to USB-A and this is a 9 volt plug-in where I'm going to plug in this battery which will just keep it going while the computer is not connected. When the computer is connected, it will just be powered up through that. So you're uploading the program into the Arduino, which will then control these digital outputs, and then those digital outputs will control this relay. Okay, so now that you've downloaded and installed the Arduino IDE program, you're just going to go to your computer and pull it up. So it's going to open to an empty sketch. Now I've done the hard work and coded everything for you with um, some of ChatGPT's help. So here it is in the notepad. Copy that into your sketch. Now the important part of this code that you want to change to adapt to your garden is how long you want zone 1 to be on, how long in between it's on and, and the starting delay. So this example shows you that it's one hour every 24 hours with no delay. The next example is on for 15 minutes every two days with a two hour delay. Now 
if for some reason you don't want a zone to be on you can just put zero down here which will make it not run if you want it on every week I just put in one hour every one week <coughs> with a three hour delay for my system I don't want any of the solenoids to be on at the same time so that I can get maximum pressure in each zone so once you've done that you want to connect to your Arduino Uno and this is by going to tools and down to port where you'll see Arduino Uno on one of the comms you select that and then you press compile and it's going to ask you to save it so save as garden timer one and save now it'll run through the compiling just to check that there's no problems with the code and then you are clicking upload it's not going to upload because I'm not connected to the Arduino but yours will upload and once that code is uploaded onto the Arduino it is saved on the Arduino so you can then disconnect it and connect your 9 volt battery and it will run that code until there is no power left <coughs> We've come outside and I've hooked in the power. This is just an old box that I found that someone was throwing away. And this is to house the electronics. It's important that it's out of the water and no bugs can get in. But this is just a raw setup to make sure that it's all going to work. 9 volt battery which goes into the Arduino which is then connected to the relays. Now the 12 volt power source goes through the relays and down into the solenoids. Here's the manifold connected all up. The water comes in, it's capped off at the end here. And then you have the four options. For now, I've just got the one sprinkler connected into 19 mil and it's gonna run for 50 seconds now. That's the program. Uh, this all needs to be underground to protect it from frost uh, and heat and if you are somewhere where cars can drive you need to make sure that that protection is strong enough so all this should be underground but just for now we've laid it out on top so the water will come around and into our veggie patch which has recently been eaten by the sheep because Someone didn't close the gate. But on this particular one, I've got a six meter throw MP3000 from the Hunter collection. And so it will pop out of the ground and spray six meters in, in 360 degrees. So this is the product we're using. It's a Hunter Pro Spray. You need to dig a hole to make sure it's underground so you can still mow over it. And then as the pressure, as the pressure comes into the water system, it will raise up and water the garden for you.